Do you need to pass GED math? Then you're going to want to learn how to get combination questions right to fully maximize your score. Now between you and me, the way most textbooks teach you how to do combination questions is probably just going to waste a lot of your time on the test. They teach you to write out a chart or a diagram by hand, and that might work for simple questions, but it's just not practical for the harder questions on the test. But fortunately, there's a formula that I've already gotten good feedback from people who have used it, and I'm going to teach you this formula here, and it's hopefully going to make this a lot simpler for you so you can get a higher score on GED math and move ahead faster faster to bigger and better things in life. So I think the best place to start learning combinations is by jumping right in with some examples that should be similar to what you'll get on the real test here. So this example says, Rick is buying vegetables from a vendor who sells broccoli, lettuce, cucumbers, and onions. Rick will buy two different kinds of vegetables. How many combinations of two kinds of vegetables could Rick buy? So there's two ways to do this. You can kind of write it out by hand or make a diagram or you could solve a question like this using the formula. So let me give you a chance to try this now. You can pause the video, try this out, and if you have no idea how to do it, don't worry. So let me let you try it now. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try this question. Whether you got it right or just had no idea isn't important. What all we care about for this video is the learning. So let me show you how to do a question like this by hand first. Let's look at the different combinations. So he could do broccoli and lettuce, so I'll write out B, L. He could do broccoli and cucumbers, so I'll write out B, C. He could also do broccoli and onions. Now let's look at the lettuce here. So he could do lettuce and cucumbers, or he could do lettuce and onions. A common mistake when trying to do, write something like this out by hand would be to list out L, B here. All right, and the reason this would be a mistake is because we already have combined broccoli and lettuce here. So we don't want to write out LB here, all right? Whether we do BL or LB, okay, it doesn't matter because with a combination, order doesn't matter. Okay, so then lastly, we would combine the C and the O. So if we write out all the combinations by hand here, what we would see if we count them up, there are six combinations of two kinds of vegetables. So this is how we would do this by hand. And if this makes sense to you and you want to do these by hand on your test, by all means, uh, you got to stick with what's going to work. But I would recommend for most people to learn how to do it with the formula because I think, in my opinion, once we get to some more harder cases, I think that it's going to take a lot longer to write it out by hand than it will to use the formula. But it's up to you to make that decision. We have here n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. And you might be wondering, what in the heck does all this mean? So don't worry, it's really actually a lot simpler than it looks. So n equals the total number of objects in the set. So what are our objects here? Our objects would be broccoli, lettuce, cucumbers, and onions. So our n here is going to be 4. But we don't just want to plug 4 into the formula because it's n factorial. So what we really do is we start with n, which is 4, and we do 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we don't even need to write times 1 because anything times 1 is just itself. All right, so this is divided by r factorial. So what is our r going to be? Well, r is the total number of choosing objects. So in other words, he's choosing two different kinds of vegetables. So r is simply 2. So in the formula here, we do r factorial. So that would really be 2 times 1. So I'm not even going to write the times 1. So in parentheses, we're going to put n minus r factorial. So n minus r, what's 4 minus 2? 4 minus 2 is just 2. And so I can just plug 2 in here, and it would really be 2 times 1, but again, there's no use in writing the 1. If we do the math here, and I would recommend using your calculator for speed on the test as much as you need to, but it would be 4 times 3, which is 12, times 2 would be 24, and 2 times 2 down here is 4, so I have 24 over 4, and that equals 6. Jean wants to take three movies with her to her friend's house. If she has five movies to choose from, how many possible combinations of three movies could she take? So it's up to you if you want to write them out or use the formula, but I'll let you pause the video and try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to teach you how to do it using the formula. n is 5 here, and when I put that into the formula here, I don't just want to put 5. I want to do 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. R is 3, so R factorial, I'm going to do 3 
times two. Okay, so now we've got our parentheses here. And inside our parentheses, we do n minus r factorial. So n is five, r is three, five minus three is two. So in my parentheses, I'm just gonna need to put two. So let's do some math here. So five times four times three times two is 120, three times two times two is 12. And if I do 120 divided by 12, the answer is 10. All right, so if you wrote them out and you got 10 that way, then you got the right answer that way too. Here's another type of question. Given eight students, how many combinations of four are possible if order doesn't matter? So let me give you a chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so I'm going to teach you again how to do this with the formula. And basically, we just want to make sure we get n and r right here. So n is always going to be the bigger number. So n here equals 8, and r here equals 4. So what am I going to put into the formula? Well, for n factorial, I'm going to do 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. What is r factorial? Here, that's going to be 4. So we've got 4 times 3 times 2. All right, so what goes in my parentheses? Well, n minus r. 8 minus 4 is just 4. So we have to do 4 times 3 times 2. So this is a lot to crunch in the calculator, but let's see what we get. So you should have 40,320 over 576, which all which equals 70 when you crunch it in your calculator. So this champion shout out goes out to Caitlin, who's now passed all the GED subjects and says, now I'm off to bigger and better things. And that's really what Test Prep Champions is all about. That's really why I make these videos. And know that right now, as you watch this video, I know you're not where you wanna be yet, but someday you'll have this done. If you keep working hard and keep working smart and just keep sticking with it, you'll be off to bigger and better things someday too. So far, we've been looking at cases that involve only one kind of ingredient. So let me show you what to do when you've got multiple kinds of ingredients. So in this case here, what we're going to use is called the fundamental counting principle. And the example says Dana is cooking a meal with five ingredients, one of four carbohydrates, one of four fruits, one of four beans, one of four kinds of meats, and one of four seasonings. How many possible combinations of ingredients could she put into the meal? So let me give you a chance to try this out. This is different. In my opinion, this is actually a little bit easier once you see how to do it. Uh, so I'll let you try it now. Okay, so if you didn't know how to do this question, don't worry. Like I said, I think this is actually a little bit easier than the uh, other cases we've looked at here. But basically, for the carbs, there are four different options. For the fruits, there's four different options. So I multiply by four. Now, for the beans, there were four different options. And for the meats, there's also four different options. And then for the seasonings, we have four different options. And if we do that, the answer is 1,024. All right, and that's all you do for these questions. So here's another case of combinations when we're combining more than one type of item. Roy is going on a date, but can't decide what to wear. He has three pairs of shoes, two shirts, and two pairs of pants. How many possible outfits can he wear if one outfit includes one pair of shoes, one shirt, and one pair of pants? So I'll let you pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically here, uh, how, many pair, how many options are there for the shoes? Well, if he has three pairs of shoes, that gives us three choices for the shoes. And then we go to the shirts. So there's two different shirts, so we multiply by two. And then there's two different options for pants. So we multiply by two again, and three times two is six times another two is 12. So when all is said and done, 12 is the correct answer here. Now it's time for me to introduce this video's champions challenge question. Now, if you're new to my channel, first of all, welcome. Thank you for sticking with me so far into the video. The champions challenge is when I pick out, in my opinion, the hardest question in the video. And that's what I'm gonna let you try next. Jen and Tom own a toy store. There are six toys they might show in the display window. Jen thinks that the window should have three toys. On the other hand, Tom thinks the window should have four toys. Counting both Jen and Tom's ideas, how many possible combinations of toys might go into the display? So now's your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, take all the time you need, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so here, the first thing that we check is that there's only one type of item here. 
and that's going to be the toys. So we're going to use this formula here, but first we're going to use the formula for Jen's idea, and then we're going to do it for Tom. So let's start by calculating it for Jen. We know that there are six toys here, so six is going to be N. And for Jen, Jen thinks there should be three toys. So for Jen's case here, we're going to say that three equals R. So let's fill in the formula. So for the top part here, it should simply look like this. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Now if we look at the bottom here, R factorial is going to just be 3 times 2. Now inside the parentheses, we're going to do 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 is 3, and 3 factorial would just be 3 times 2. So let's crunch these numbers in our calculator and we'll see that we'll have 720 over 36, which equals 20. So for Jen, we see that there would be 20 different combinations. So let me just put J equals 20 up here. So now we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna do the calculation for Tom. And then we're gonna have to go back to the J equals 20 and we're gonna have to add that. So for Tom this time, n is going to be exactly the same. So let me fill in n in our formula. So this is again how n should look. It's exactly the same. But this time our r is going to be different. So instead of 3, r this time is 4. So we want to do 4 factorial down here. So we write out 4 times 3 times 2. Now inside the parentheses, 6 minus 4 is 2. So we can just simply leave this as two in here. So let's crunch the numbers in our calculator. So the top number is again gonna be 720, but the bottom number is 48. And here we see that this equals 15. So what we have to do now is just add up 20 and 15, which is 35. So 35 is the correct answer here. So at the end of the day, there's multiple ways to approach these questions. You can use a chart or a diagram, write it up by hand. You will be able to do that on your test. You'll have like a whiteboard you can write on if you're testing online. They still give you a digital whiteboard you can use. But for most people, I recommend you memorize that formula and use it. And also just remember how to use the fundamental counting principle. And you're going to be set. Hopefully this is going to help you out.